This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 69 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast, where we interview amazing entrepreneurs who took their dreams and ideas and turned them into reality. Along the way, they'll share their tips and ideas of how you can turn your own dreams and ideas into reality too. Our guest on today's episode is Sandra Lewis. More about Sandra in a moment. Did you know that the Jumble Think Podcast has over 170 episodes now? It's crazy, I know, but we do. And those guests are pretty incredible, so we want to make sure you know how to connect with those guests check out those past episodes, and subscribe to upcoming episodes with amazing guests that are lined up for the rest of 2018. The easiest way to get connected is to go to your favorite place to listen to podcasts, search for the Jumble Think Podcast, and click subscribe. If you like listening on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, simply go to jumblethink.com slash iTunes. And for Spotify, jumblethink.com slash Spotify. Those links will take you directly to the app where you can click subscribe. And while you're there, why don't you leave us a rating review? We'd love to hear what you think of the show, what you like, what you don't like, and your favorite episode. So drop us a rating and review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am the host of the Jumble Think Podcast, and I want to welcome you to another episode with incredible entrepreneurs who are changing the world around them. Today's guest is Sandra Lewis. We're going to learn more about her in a moment. Before we do that, we want to thank today's sponsor, Opportunity in China. Have you been looking for a way to change your career or social prospects? Do you see the world around you changing and you haven't quite figured out the path to take? Well, you're not alone in seeking opportunity. Visit opportunityinchina.com for access to scholarships to attend universities in China, Or if you have a bachelor's degree already, OpportunityInChina.com provides access to jobs in the educational sector all across China. Working in China is not only often well-paid, but it will place you among one-fifth of the world's population, boosting your social network, bringing you more deeply into the story of globalization, opening doors you never knew existed. So seize your opportunity now and visit their website for more information at OpportunityInChina.com. Dot com. They also have an incredible podcast where they interview people who have gone and either learned or taught abroad. They share incredible stories that will inspire you in your journey of chasing your own dream. Head on over to wherever you like to listen to podcasts, search for Opportunity in China, and subscribe. I think you're going to enjoy it, so take a moment and go check it out. Now let's learn a little bit more about today's guest, Sandra Lewis. I am super excited about my guest today. Her name is Sandra Lewis. She is the founder and CEO of Worldwide 101. They are a premium subscription staffing company connecting demanding founders and executives with ridiculously talented remote staff. Sandra believes flexible remote work is the way of the future and that it creates an unparalleled win-win for business and talent alike. Sandra has worked with hundreds of the world's top CEOs, founders, and executives to help them win back their time by growing their business by delegating key tasks to amazingly talented remote staff. The unique model of Worldwide 101 has been recognized by some of the most respected publications across the country, including Forbes and Inc. magazines, as well as being named as one of the best entrepreneurial companies in America by Entrepreneur Magazine. Now, I I have to say this. I have uh, actually used their service in the past, back when we had our our large agency, and they are absolutely incredible uh, to work with. Their staff, the the people we worked with uh, in in helping our team, incredible. So it is truly a privilege, and I'm super excited to have Sandra on the podcast. Sandra, thanks so much for taking time out. Oh, thank you so much, Mike. What a beautiful introduction. We're talking about VAs. We're talking about uh, remote workers and a little bit of outsourcing that. But before we really dive into that, I want to get your backstory. How did you um, decide that this was a business that you wanted to start and and, and really uh, make something awesome? Because mm-hmm. that's what you've done. 
Right, yes. So, well, I started um, Worldwide 101 back in 2012. And um, I had been working in New York for about 20 years at the time. And wow. I had just moved our family back to the UK. My husband, my husband is British. Okay. And I had been working very long hours in a big city for many years. And yeah. I wanted a break uh, from the traditional <laughs> employment route, the traditional office, uh, the traditional office politics. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to live in the countryside versus a big city where I could walk my dogs, have a flexible schedule. But I wasn't ready to retire. Um, and I still wanted to somehow find work that I could still... Um, find rewarding and where I could, yeah. you know, keep growing as a person and in my career. And I also wanted to continue to work at an international level uh, where I could oh, use cool. my skills and not yeah. you know, just, just in Europe, uh, given I had worked internationally and in the U.S. for so many years. So at the time, um, it was the early days of, of freelancing. Um, and okay. remote work. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of platforms such as, particularly such as Upwork, um, which I'm yeah. sure many, many, many of, of your listeners are very familiar with. So at the time, you know, Tim Ferriss had also a few years um, before that uh, launched his book, The 4-Hour Workweek. A lot of business owners were tapping into virtual and remote talent to help with their business and, and in particular virtual assistance because that was Tim Ferriss's big thing. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I can give it a try. I can kind of look to see if I can use my skills um, to help um, growing businesses. And so I started um, helping out um, as an HR consultant and as a project manager because that was that was my my background, my professional right, background. Right. And um, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, it was. I have to say, you know, the timing of it all. It just. It just got started in that way, completely organically. I had a few clients. They referred their friends, they referred their <laughs> colleagues, and then they started saying, well, um, could you also do bookkeeping and can you also do a bit of marketing and can you also, and I was like, well, no, I mean, that's, that's not my background, <laughs> but I realized, you know, this is really perhaps a niche. I mean, it seems like business owners need to be able to tap into resources on a flexible basis um, and resources that they might not find locally. So I started assembling a team. Um, there was lots of trial and errors at the beginning. <laughs> um, <laughs> but fast forward, you know, we've grown now organically um, ever since. And we now have more than, than 100 employees. And we're known as, as a leader in, in, in the industry. That is super, super cool. Your specific role in the company, you, you're the founder, you're the CEO. What's your day look like? What is it that you are <laughs> fulfilling in, in that, that role as founder, CEO, and probably the chief vision officer? Yes. Um, uh, no day is alike, I have to okay. say. And, and I love that. Um, my day is, is focused, uh, in fact, you, you said it very well. It's focused on, on it's two prongs, right? It's keeping okay. the vision alive. Uh -huh. and, and, and being sure that, you know, strategically um, we keep moving ahead um, and that we don't stagnate um, and that we, you know, we keep being the best at what, what, we, what we do. And then it's, of course, you know, the CEO work, which is very, very day-to-day -day, um, and, yeah. and the yeah. trenches and the details of a lot of, I do a lot of, um, of the operational work. I work with, very closely with, with the operations manager and I work very closely with our recruiting team and with our sales team. So those are really my three areas that I, um, that I spend a lot of time, um, you know, day-to-day -day, uh, in the trenches with. You know, for me, I was listening to that, uh, kind of the story behind how Worldwide 101 began. And, and it amazed me because I didn't realize you had spent years in, I, I knew you spent years in New York, but I didn't realize mm -hmm. that you were kind of that employee base, that you were working for somebody else. And now you're kind of on this new adventure for the last couple of years of doing an entrepreneurial journey. Can you share a little bit about that difference and some of the that the maybe fears or obstacles you faced it faced uh, changing that mentality of being an employee to being a founder, being a person who's creating something that is unique and special and different than how others are doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I think, and perhaps every entrepreneur feels that way. Um, you know, even as an employee, 
I have to say, I was always a little bit of, I always had a bit of a rebellious streak to, <laughs> to, to me. Um, I've, <laughs> I've always aspired to basically do something where I could, for lack of a better word, be free. Okay. The funny thing is when you actually build a business um, and you're, you know, you're the CEO, you're, you're totally far from free, right? Because you actually have uh, enormous responsibilities. In particular, I feel huge responsibilities, obviously, to our clients, but also to our team. You know, people who have put their trust into basically you know, following my idea of building this yeah, crazy, yeah. <laughs> crazy business. Um, and, and, um, I'm, I'm always very grateful that people, you know, join us, you know, professionals, again, we're a premium company. So, right, you know, our right. team, our team all have a minimum of 10 years of experience. Most of them have 15 years to 20 years of experience in their field of specialty. So as C-level executive assistants, as project managers, as marketing specialists. So these are people who themselves have worked for corporations or businesses and who, for whatever reason, similar to me, but everyone has their own story, have decided, you know, I need a more flexible schedule, whether that's because they're mothers and fathers and they don't want to be, you know, tied to a desk all day or whether uh, they're military spouses. We, 20% of our team are, are military spouses who need to travel wow. yeah. and who obviously want to still have a career, but who, you know, can't, um, can't have a job that's tied down to a particular state uh, because they're, they're moving around quite a bit. So um, I, you know, I'm, I'm always grateful that all of these amazing and talented people have... Um, have followed in my lead, and that's a big responsibility. So um, it's the irony of it all, right? As an employee, you you think, well, I want to be more free, and I want to build a business, and you know, I don't want to kind of abide by someone else's rules. But actually, right. as a CEO, you have to abide by very strict rules. <laughs> as, I mean, they're, they're, they're rules that you have created, but as a professional company, you know, we have very high standards, and yeah. Yeah. I, I have to ensure that actually we have a very we have a structure, we have legal requirements, we, you know, we're compliant and, and I have a big responsibility to, uh, to ensure that, um, you know, that the team continues to have amazing clients to work with. So does that answer your question? It's the irony of it all. You think you're freer, yeah. but actually as a CEO, it's a lot of work and, uh, you know, you're not that much freer, freer in a different way. Freer in a different way. I get it, of course, as a founder and CEO myself, uh, you know, there is a great saying. I've, I've I've quoted it before. It comes from a business coach I had years ago, and he always said, "Only kings and queens know what kings and queens know." Uh, <laughs> and, and, and you know, of course, what he was saying was basically, until you're in that role, until you've experienced that space, you you truly don't know what it means to do the job. Right. For you, as a a founder and CEO of a startup that's now an established business, and you've been doing this for a while now. What are some of the things that maybe when you went into it, you uh, didn't have eyes wide open? You uh, didn't know what to expect and kind of surprised you along that journey? Mm -hmm. um, I've put a really big emphasis on uh, paying a lot of attention to details. Okay. Over the years. Um, when I first started, as I said, you know, um, the demand was was bigger than what I could do, and therefore I assembled a team, and I, you know, didn't really pay attention to actually having a structure in place and hiring practices in place and um, a culture in place, and you know what type of people. I, I basically was like, well, listen, you know, how, you know how to do bookkeeping, great. Let's join our team. <laughs> you know, you right. can help us. Oh, right. you seem to have qualifications. That sounds great. Over the years, I've learned that. Um, you know, obviously, it, we, you have to put a lot of systems and procedures and things in place. And that, and that the quality, um, and you, particularly if you want to be a premium company, quality and it, it comes in the details. You have to yeah. really kind of, you know, uh, make sure you have standards of operating procedures and hire, best hiring practices and onboarding and training. And, you know, it doesn't all happen um, magically. So yeah. I would say, you know, in retrospect, I would have put some of these systems in place a little earlier um, just to avoid some of the pains of, you know, uh, basically having, for us, I'm going to say having the wrong people uh, on the bus because, you know, we are a people organization. What we supply is people. We're, you know, we're a staffing company. So um, putting, you know, making sure that I had those systems in place so that I had um, 
less pains in, in having to fire people, <laughs> to, put it, to put it bluntly. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. Uh, again, to quote a, a dear friend of mine, a college professor, you know, it's always easier to ask the right people on the bus than ask the wrong people to get off. Yes, and so, <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit more in segment two about how to bring the right people on and how you help do that. For you in this journey of of creating this amazing business, how are you finding purpose in what you do? Mm -hmm. um, one of our of our company values is um, everyone wins. Okay. Um, it's something that's really, really important um, to me. Um, I want to be sure that, you know, we make a difference in, in someone's day and in someone's life, whether that's a client or whether that's, that's a team. And yeah. uh, my biggest reward is, is doing just that, is hearing from our team or from our clients that we've made a difference, that, you know, partnering with us um, has meant a win for them. Uh, I talked yeah. earlier about the military spouses. You know, I'm, I, I sometimes very honestly tear up when I speak to some of the uh, military spouses on our team who, um, who say, you know, I've, I've, where have you been? I've been looking for a job that I can um, take with me, that is rewarding, that is fulfilling. Um, you know, it's very hard to be employed when you are moving constantly. And a lot of employers don't want to employ you, even, if, even though you have amazing skills. It's just, you know, people want continuity. So um, knowing that, I've made it, that we've made a difference as a company um, in someone's life, that the person is able to earn a living, um, you know, and yet fulfill their family obligations and support their spouse is, um, you know, is very fulfilling to me. Super, super cool. You are growing and changing and evolving your business. What's one challenge you're currently working to overcome in your business? Um, the main challenge, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to sound repetitive here, is yeah. finding amazing people. Right. Um, you know, that is our biggest challenge. Um, our business model is built on providing successful founders and executives uh, with skilled very skilled, very experienced staff that they can trust, you know, to represent them and, and their business. And um, um, our, we set the bar very, very high in our, in our recruitment efforts. So that means that we decline many, many, many candidates. Um, <laughs> and we got, um, and, and this is true, people always kind of go, wow, I mean, really? We got 32,000 job applications last year. Wow. So imagine how many thousands of people we had to decline. Um, right. And it's difficult to find, you know, those professionals that, um, that will fit within our culture, within our business, that will stay with us long, time, long term, and that will really uh, support, you know, business owners in the way that, you know, that, um, that we say we do <laughs> and hold, hold to our promise. Now you are um, doing really cool stuff. What's the next big goal you have for your business? Um, so our goal uh, is to become the go-to place uh, for mid-sized businesses to find um, ridiculously talented remote staff on yeah. a monthly subscription, um, okay. allowing them to scale quickly without the hassles of the lengthy recruitment process, the hiring, the payroll, the headaches of managing a staff, everything that everyone knows, every business owner knows you know, about, about finding reliable, reliable staff. So we want to be that go-to go service um, that, that businesses you know, um, look for uh, to, to hire to hire talent. In a moment, we'll be back with Sandra Lewis for our second segment where we're going to go deeper into this idea of staffing, finding the right people for your team, and how they work to really bring quality to your team in a remote way. The Jumble Think team is all about equipping you and helping you make your dreams and ideas a reality. One of the ways we do that is through this podcast, but another way we do it is through the free guides you can find at jumblethink.com slash guide. Our most recent guide is the Dreamer's Method to Micro Experiments, which will walk you through the steps of using micro experiments to move big ideas and dreams to reality. Are you ready to go even deeper? Well, the JumbleThink team is here to help you on that journey too. We offer coaching and consulting services, and we've worked with over 400 business owners, startups, and corporations to turn their ideas and dreams into realities too. 
All you have to do is drop us an email, hello at jumblethink.com. Let's start the conversation and see how we can help you on your journey of turning dreams and ideas into reality. Now let's return into our second segment with Sandra Lewis. We are back with Sandra Lewis for our second segment. We're going to get into more of this idea of staffing and how it's going to affect your team, how you can use virtual staff, virtual assistants, how you can use remote workers to really build an effective team that gives you uh, work-life balance and gives you the flexibility to really thrive. Sandra, before we get going, I want to make sure that people know how they can find and connect with you because you got some awesome stuff going on. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we've worked with you, absolutely loved it. And I want to make sure people know how they can find and connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. So our website is worldwide11.com. And uh, we're actually offering um, uh, a special offer to your listeners, which is a 20% of their first month on any of our subscriptions. And so it's the link uh, for your listener is worldwide101.com slash jumblethink. Very, very cool. And if you've never worked with uh, a staffing solution. I've worked with uh, several throughout the years in various aspects of our business, whether it was finding uh, additional team members for developers, uh, bringing in uh, an executive assistant. Uh, and I have to say that Worldwide 101 is by far one of my favorite places to find incredible staffing. So take that offer up because it's going to be awesome for you. I really want to get into the weeds of staffing because staffing as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a visionary is one of the most powerful and releasing places to, to build a business, but it's also one of the most stressful and hardest things to do. I'm a big fan of outsourcing staffing, not necessarily from the standpoint of, of, uh, you know, hiring random people from around the world, but from the standpoint of letting experts help me along that journey. Tell us a little bit about the process of Worldwide 101 and how you help entrepreneurs and business owners really take their vision, their company to the next level, and ultimately how it frees up those executives to find that work-life balance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I want to speak a little bit about premium subscription staffing because yeah. it, it, it could be a, um, a new term for, for many, for many of, of your listeners. Um, right. So, I mean, when I think of premium staffing, uh, subscriptions, subscription means it's like recurring and everything like that. I've worked with Upwork to find developers in the past uh, to join our team. And it's just a different model because it's, it's very different. So how is that different exactly. than an Upwork? How is it, how do you set yourself out? Yeah, exactly. So, so we are, we are, it's what you said. So subscription is recurring. So what we focus on is long-term. So okay. we're not a task-based um, agency or, or company. We really focus on supporting successful business owners for the long term. So we support demanding founders and executives. We provide them with highly experienced remote staff based in the U.S. to fill key positions within their company as a service on a simple monthly subscription. So that's it in a, in a, in a nutshell. Um, and, and it's exactly what you said, you know, in, in working with hundreds of, of business owners over the years, we know that one of the biggest pain points is for businesses, but for growing businesses even more so, is finding amazing people to join their team and getting right. started quickly as well, right? Because uh, lengthy recruitment processes, um, we know, you know, finding somebody great can take months. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's finding those people amazing that are amazing and quickly. You know, and I think that's one of the powerful things about working with you is from my experience, and, and, and this may have changed from when we used uh, Worldwide 101 uh, a few years back when, again, we were running our big agency and we needed executive help. But what was awesome about the experience was uh, you came back to us with a couple qualified candidates and said, hey, here are a couple people that are from our team that are perfect for your need. And it, it immediately uh, shrunk down the amount of time that we had to take as a team to vet a person because it's, that person's already been vetted as a quality worker with good work philosophies. And, and the other part is that you really take into consideration the company culture to make sure that you're fitting the right person with the business, which is so powerful because if you, you can have a right person, we, we've had some staff in the past uh, that were 
on campus, on site staff who were incredible at what they did, but they didn't fit our culture, which made right, it a bad right. employee. And we were a bad employer for them. Uh, and then from that standpoint, my experience was that I was able to go in and talk to these candidates, really find the right one to work for us. And that person was stellar. It was just perfect uh, fit for what we were doing, our need and our culture. Is that still how you're doing it? Uh, can absolutely. You speak a little bit more to that. Yeah, absolutely. So our, our service is highly personalized because as you yeah. say, every single business is different and we really take that into consideration. Um, so we speak when, when someone gets in touch with us, um, looking for, you know, for an amazing person to join that team and whether that's an executive assistant, again, with 10 or 15 years of experience or a project manager or a marketing specialist or a bookkeeper or, you know, a support with design, we will speak with you for as as long as it takes, one of our team will speak with you for as long as it takes to understand what you're looking for. And as you said, not just the skills you're after, but also the type of person um, that you that you're looking for. Some of our some of our clients want someone who is very structured, who follows instructions to a T because that's what's important. And right. some of our clients prefer someone more creative. And they say, you know, I really want to work with somebody who thinks out of the box, will work with me on ideas. So that's very different, right? That's a very different type of personality. So we listen to, to, to our clients to try to find out exactly what they're looking for. We then look to see on our team who to suggest. And as you said, our team are hired by us. They're vetted. They have a lot of experience. We, we stand by our team. So, um, you know, anyone we're going to suggest has already been um, completely, you know, vetted and are already working with our clients. Most of our team have been with us for years, in fact. Um, mm. We then come back and we suggest a couple of candidates, as you, as you said, and we insist, in fact, that's part of our process, for you to meet with the candidate before you sign up. So right, you don't subscribe, right. you don't pay until the two of you have met and until the two of you have decided, yeah, you know, sounds like a good fit. Let's give it a try. We always say it's not an interview because we've interviewed the person and why, right. you know, that's why you're paying us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's that 15 minutes of let's get to know each other. Tell me a little bit about you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the company and just, you know, seeing whether you, you can tell pretty quickly whether you gel with someone anyways, whether, you know, it seems like it's, it, it might work in terms of cultural fit and, and style and, and all of that. For me, when I think of, of uh, what you've done, at least in the past, when, when I encountered working with you, I, I thought of you as a VA virtual assistant uh, staffing solution, but you're more than that. Tell us about the different spaces that you can help a company or an executive really fill uh, on their team. Yes. So when we very first started um, back in 2012 and, and for a few years, we were a premium virtual assistant company. Um, right. And, um, you know, the, the, over the years that has served us really, really well. Um, we've been able to support uh, growing businesses and, um, you know, in fact, we were a leader in, in that space. Um, in the last year, we've... Um, I have, I should say, I have realized that the term virtual assistant was, uh, was stifling us uh, for a number of, of, of reasons. Um, and one of the reasons is exactly what you just said, which is that the term virtual assistant is often associated with admin support. Right, or, right. or basic basic task, or sometimes the task based um, type service, and um, and yes, we're much more than that. So larger businesses, or even s smaller to mid sized businesses who were looking for more than admin, um, were basically writing writing us off. Well, via company, that's not for me. I'm looking for a C level executive assistant. I'm looking for this amazing marketing specialist, and. That's what we offered. <laughs> and yet, you know, people couldn't quite equal the virtual assistant with, right. with, um, with our service offering. So, um, you know, in, in the last year, we have really changed our messaging to, be, to, to appeal to a broader audience um, as a subscription staffing company. Um, we're offering, you know, uh, a very wide range of, um, of skills to, to growing businesses. 
So some of those skills, of course, are executive assistance, uh, accounting and bookkeeping, marketing help. What are some of the other spaces that you're helping people really find the right team members for themselves? Um, you know, I would say uh, sales support um, okay. as well. There's, we've, mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of, of sales support. Uh, recruitment is another one. Um, and I think you've said the other ones, marketing, um, sales support, recruitment, executive assistant, bookkeeping. We do also do web development and design, but that's an ad hoc service for our current okay. clients. Yeah. So, because we're not a web agency, we're not a design agency. But what we found is that some of our clients might say, um, oh, well, you know, do you have someone that can help me with my WordPress site and add a few plugins? Um, and instead of, you know, sending them on to someone else, um, we do have some, some technical help on our team that do ad hoc projects um, for our clients in that way. Super, super, super cool. You mentioned about the process. You got tens of thousands of applications, uh, even just for this last year, to become part of your team. When you're vetting a, a potential employee... And I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we don't know what to look for. We don't know what questions to ask. We don't know how to find the right cultural fit and be able to vet the right uh, skill set to make sure that we're bringing on the right team members. By far, for me, it was one of the hardest things to do with our agency was to, to really know how to go through that process. So walk us through some key things that we need to be doing to really find the right people for our teams. For us, um, you know, obviously the skills is, is, is the obvious one, right? I mean, and, and I think that that's the easy part. So right. we, we, of course, you know, hire for people who, as I said, have at least 10 years of experience in their field of specialty, have a proven track record, have great references. So uh, for us, that's kind of a given. Uh, what we really, really look for is um, candidates who have the right service mentality. For us... Mm. Um, you know, as a premium uh, subscription staffing company supporting founders and executives who are growing their business, who are very, very, very busy, um, what we have found is the most important thing is, is you know, to, to give them, to provide them with someone who is there for them. So that mentality of what can I do for you? Uh, someone who is proactive, someone who loves other people to succeed. One of our questions often is in the interview process is, you know, tell us of a time where, um, you know, you, you were part of, of a successful outcome. And okay. we look for people who don't speak about themselves. We look for people who speak mm -hmm. about others. Um, and, and the team, right? You have people who right away will say, well, I did this and I did that, and this is why it was successful. <laughs> and, um, you know, we look for people who will say, you know, as a team, this is what we accomplished. I'm so proud to be part of this team. I'm so proud to have accomplished this with my colleagues or I'm so proud to have seen my boss succeed. People who truly, um, yeah, I mean, put, put themselves at the service of, of other of others' um, success because you know that's what we do. The, the success is is us supporting su successful business owners to be even more successful, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's that that's the quality that we look for um, in in our team. That's super super cool. You are uh, approaching this from building long term relationships with the teams, companies, individual executives that you're working with. And a lot of people view VA services or online staffing or remote workers as a temporary fix. How can people really begin to change that mindset to say, this is a great way to build my team? Or how does it release them to have the freedom to really expand and grow instead of, you know, it, it, hiring employees is really expensive. Mm -hmm. hiring additional team members. But by going through this model, it gives you the flexibility to maybe move quicker in that growth than what you typically would do uh, by waiting for uh, bringing in that full-time assistant or full-time employee. But it, 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 it's not just a temporary fix. It's a long-term uh, relationship. So can you share a little bit about that, that um, contrast? Because I think there is a, 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 um, a tainted view of what uh, these services, your service could do to really help 
a business executive, a entrepreneur, uh, a startup, wherever they are in that process for the long haul and not just for the next month or two months or six months. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you hit it on the nail in terms of why we have uh, evolved our messaging. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we were a virtual, a premium virtual assistant company, and um, there, there has been a lot of misconceptions of what virtual assistant companies have done. And, you know, rightly so. I mean, many virtual assistant companies are just task-based and short-term and, yeah, um, yeah. you know, are not necessarily in it for the long haul um, and are kind of a placeholder, right? I mean, let me get a VA while I figure out how to hire somebody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, you know, we, we've really evolved our messaging um, to be a, a subscription staffing company um, to um, hopefully really appeal to that very busy executive who doesn't want to hire because I, of everything you've said. It's a pain. You know, it's a very long recruitment process. Then you've got payroll. Then you've got state laws. Then you've got compliance. Um, so for that very busy executive to be able to tap into a subscription staffing company who basically does it all for you. Um, and, you know, subscription, I mean, innovators from many industries, um, from Amazon, Dropbox, Netflix, uh, Salesforce, have transformed everyone's expectation about how easy it should be to subscribe to a service and, and start experiencing those immediate great results. So really gone are the days where you actually have to purchase anything, right, for your right, business. Right. I mean, most business owners don't own anything. Um, the, we, we subscribe to anything and and. So, you know, we asked ourselves, you know, from that model, well, what if you could subscribe to staff without having to employ them yourself? Yeah. <laughs> and this is where, you know, our, our evolutions come from. Love that for sure. You kind of are, are, are stepping into a little bit of a space which is uh, very controversial right now. Um, not in a bad way, but just there's varying opinions on the space of, there are those traditionalists who are like, I want everyone that's working with me in the office. We need that FaceTime. We need to be working face to face, uh, pull up a whiteboard, work on the whiteboard, uh, have meetings in the same space. And then there are those who are saying, hey, you know what? Our, our, our staff doesn't need to be on site. Um, and there's this cultural shift of a new generation of workers who say, I want to work on my terms, the way I want to work, where I want to work, and have the freedom to, to work on um, my terms. So mm -hmm. share a little bit about that transformation of, of work philosophy and how um, maybe traditional business owners or an emerging breed of business owners can really approach this shift in philosophy of what workers want and expect to have as part of a team, whether it's through a an agency like yours where you're a premium subscription or whether they're an employee, they, they want to um, do it their way. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we as business owners navigate that? What do we need to be asking of ourselves? And how do we need to process this new philosophy of work and what it looks like? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that, uh, yeah, th there's definitely a remote revolution out there. I mean, we see it with uh, the professionals that we're able to hire and onboard, more and more people want the flexibility and this lifestyle. And yet they don't want to, you know, um, not have a rewarding career. So they want both. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think that more and more businesses are now seeing that they have to offer flexible arrangements um, for their employees to retain some of their employees uh, for the long term. But I would say, um, you know, and, and that might be, you know, a bit of self-promotion, but, you know, it, you have to be really careful when you um, hire someone remote and you have to, it's, it's different than hiring someone in office. I mean, you know, you want to be able to have, as I said earlier, you know, very clear standards of operations, um, very clear ways of hiring. You don't see the person. So, you know, there's, there's different things that need to be put in place to ensure that, you know, you can 
uh, trust them at a distance. It's not for everyone. And that's why, you know, we declined so many applicants. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. someone's dream. It's many, many people's dreams. But, you know, unfortunately, not everyone succeeds at being very disciplined and are treating the work, the work um, the same, whether they are in office or not in office. So for those businesses that, you know, want to venture into remote, um, I would recommend that, you know, they start with partnering with a company that knows what they're doing <laughs> uh, before, <laughs> before venturing into just, you know, uh, hiring somebody remote um, on, on their own. I think we've kind of discussed this a little bit, but I, as we wrap up this segment, I want to make sure people really understand the shift of employee-employer relationship. You know, several years ago, Tim Ferriss wrote The 4-Hour Work Week, which was one of the uh, launching pads if it didn't accelerate uh, the whole VA virtual assistant, virtual employee philosophy. In that time it's evolved, it's changed. You are changing your messaging to make sure people realize what you really do. What is the, the, the thing you want to make sure people really understand about uh, virtual workers and where we are today as a society compared to where we were 15 or 20 years ago? Um, one of, the, I think, the biggest shift is this whole um, notion of contractor versus employee. Okay. You know, when when you work with a staffing or a virtual assistant company, you know, and they provide you with, with remote staff, um, you're contracting with the company and, and a lot of business owners think that the responsibility to ensure that all of the necessary compliance is in place really lies on the virtual assistant company. Um, however, you know, that's really no longer the case. Uh, and it's something that's, you know, changing with, most recently, you know, I, I, as you said, many years ago, it was very new. A lot of people were contracting out um, and, and using freelancers. But really, if you're using someone on your team for the long term, um, so not task-based, but, you know, if you're working with, with someone for the long term on your team and you're giving them direction, you're telling them how to do the work, then they really are an employee, Okay. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of, I think, misclassification is, has happened, you know, over the years and is now uh, uh, getting <laughs> kind of, um, you know, um, rectified um, in terms of, you know, the, the employee versus contractor and that relationship um, to, to, the, to the employer. Does that okay, answer so your question? It does, but it, it raises a really good secondary question. If I'm hiring you, which, uh, again, I think everyone who's looking at making this transition, this is a great company to start that conversation with. Uh, if I'm talking to you and working with you, you and your team manage that employee side of things. So Absolutely. we're contracting to you. And so we don't have to worry about uh, knowing all the right answers to that relationship and making sure we're compliant and making sure that we're uh, doing our due diligence as an employer because we're able to work with you. You're able to navigate and guide through some of those things and then also manage those things. Is, absolutely. is that right? That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, when you work with, with a premium subscription staffing company like, like us, we hire our U.S. team. So we take care of, you know, um, the payroll, the compliance, the legal, the state registration, all of those things that are very complicated because <laughs> every state right. is different in the U.S. Yes. Um, so, you know, we take care of all of that. We, we pay for all of that so that you have peace of mind. You get someone, uh, you basically get served on a silver, on a, on a golden platter, I should say. <laughs> amazing, <laughs> someone who is amazing, who can integrate into your business, who can get started without any of the hassles of, as I said, recruitment is one thing, but then mm -hmm. all of the compliance. Um, and, and that is, you know, you know, becoming more and more important for employers to ensure that whoever they work with, you know, is employed, is getting the right benefits. They don't want to have to worry about it, but obviously it's an important component. It also, I believe is really important to have someone employed on your team because, you know, it's, a, it's a commitment. It's that extra level of commitment. You know, we, we provide you with someone who obviously, you know, uh, is hired by us and therefore has committed to working with us for the long term, um, is well taken care of, is not, you know, worried about, you know, 
perhaps not finding their next gig next month. And, you know, a lot of the, what happens with freelancers, you know, the, the instability, the uncertainty of, of that next paycheck. So you benefit, I mean, business owners benefit from having someone who um, is committed to them for the long term and is not, you know, tomorrow going to leave because uh, they might have found a gig that's paid better somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And as a business owner who's had an agency of 12 plus full-time people uh, at any given time in the past, um, I can tell you that one of my biggest fears, frustrations, um, um, doubts areas uh, are, I think, one of our biggest weaknesses was that whole area of employee, employer, contractor, freelancer, uh, finding not necessarily just the right people, but finding the right um, answers to the question mm -hmm. of employees. It is a scary and hard uh, space to really navigate as an entrepreneur because that's not what we do. What we do is we create vision, we create ideas, we create uh, client relationships. And so that whole space of administrating employees is so hard to navigate as an entrepreneur. And I think most entrepreneurs would say that um, that area is probably one of the reasons why they didn't get employees quicker is mm -hmm. because of all the question marks. And so being able to have an advocate, having a company to work with that, that's navigated this and answered your questions and, and manages it for you is an asset to a business that I think is very powerful. If you are ready to make that leap, if you're ready to grow your business, this is the kind of thing that you need to be looking to for not just the short term, but as a long term strategy. So highly recommend what Worldwide 101 is doing. And um, Sandra, can you remind us how people can find you again? Yeah, absolutely. So worldwide101.com uh, to find out about um, about us and, and what we do. And I believe your um, listeners are getting 20% off their first month on any subscription. And the link to that is worldwide101.com slash jumblethink. Super, super cool. We'll be right back with Sandra Lewis for rapid fire questions. Today's sponsor is Opportunity in China. Here's a little bit more about what they're doing and how they can serve you. At the dawn of the 19th century, forward thinking people moved to the commercial centers of Europe. Moving into the 20th century, America welcomed millions into the land of freedom and opportunity. It is now the 21st century. Many of the successes and fortunes of our generations will be made in China. To learn how you can seize opportunity in China, follow the Opportunity in China podcast. The Opportunity in China podcast is available anywhere podcasts are streamed, or you can visit our website at opportunityinchina.com. We are back with Sandra Lewis, founder and CEO of Worldwide 101 for Rapid Fire Questions. Sandra, are you ready for Rapid Fire Questions? I'm ready. All right. So the first question is, what is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? So I would say start small okay. uh, and start by doing it yourself. Um, okay. I, I find that a lot of entrepreneurs have big ideas and big visions and start, spend, start spending a lot of money um, yeah. <laughs> before they've made any money. So I always say figure out if your idea is viable uh, before you go big. Make money before you spend it. <laughs> I think that's so powerful. Uh, I am a big fan of that philosophy. Now, on the broader scale, what is one change you'd like to see in the world? Um, so I'm really big on the idea um, that we should be respectful to one another, no matter mm. what the circumstances. That's really my big thing. Um, I'd love to see a little bit more of that in the world, a little less cursing, a little less anger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just think so much can get resolved, you know, with decency. So that's what, that's what I'd love to see more of. You are um, doing really cool stuff with your business. You have a legacy that goes back into the corporate world. What do you want your legacy to be? So um, I often say to our team or, and to our candidates who, who apply to work with us that it, it takes a lot of courage to be different, mm -hmm. um, to challenge the status quo, to leave a traditional job, to venture remote, to venture flexible. Um, for many people, it's, it's really a jump into the unknown um, mm -hmm. to join us. Yeah. And so, you know, courageous and brave people inspire me. And I'd like to be remembered as, as someone who was bold enough um, to do something different. 
Love it. Love that for sure. On the, the topic of inspiration, where do you find inspiration? So in, in my 20s, I, uh, I traveled um, in India and in okay. Asia. Yeah. And I really um, got inspired by the philosophies of yoga and introspection. And mm. turning inwards um, is where I find my inspiration and my, and my strength uh, to this day. What do you think is one book every dreamer or entrepreneur should read and why? I love Raising the Bar by um, Gary Erickson. Gary is the founder of Cliff Bars. Okay. Um, he talks about how to do good in business and how to galvanize a team with kindness. Uh, for mm -hmm. him, business is more than just making money. Um, and I think it's a fantastic read. You are defining your own trail that you want to blaze. And I love the fact that uh, throughout the episode, you get glimpses of the fact that you're a little bit of a rebel. You don't want to go into the status quo. And I, I love that. For you, how do you define success? Success for me is when at the end of the day, I have made a difference in someone's day, in someone's life. That's how I define success. It comes back to one of our core values of everyone wins. You know, I feel mm. like being successful is having a positive impact on people. Now, what is one habit that you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? One habit. Um, so if, if you'd asked me that question many years ago, I would have said, without a doubt, perseverance. Okay. A few years into being a CEO, <laughs> I have to say... Um, Perseverance, persistence, but also mm. knowing when not to be persistent, when not to push. I've learned mm. that over the years. You know, there's, you push, 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 but there's a time when the door does not open, you have to stop pushing. Um, so, you know, it's perseverance, persistence um, with some intelligence that I didn't have when I started. <laughs> <laughs> How do you start and finish your day? So I start my day every day. First thing in the morning, I walk my dogs. I have three big dogs. Okay. Uh, it helps me get moving. It helps me get some exercise and some fresh air. Um, honestly, I don't have a ritual for ending my day. My day is really hectic and um, I, I wish I was a little bit more disciplined, but I, I start my day fresh and, and the end of my day depends on what the day is like. I completely understand that. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd do? So without a doubt, uh, I would be living uh, on an organic farm okay. <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with horses, with cows, oh, with cool. sheep. Um, I would have enough land to adopt stray dogs uh, to give them a good life. Um, my dream really ultimately is to spend more time with animals and nature and less time with humans. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this, that might answer this question. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? That's it. All right. Living on an organic, living on an organic, organic uh, farm. Love that for sure. As we wrap up today's episode, we always like to leave our guests have a final thought. What's your final thought for us today? Um, I think that, you know, in, in the world of entrepreneurship, um, we all have a tendency um, for, um, for, to look outside of ourselves um, and, and to, to think, you know, that the, the, the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. Um, we're constantly looking for what, what is the competition doing? What is this person doing? Uh, the hype of social media, the news, the press, you know, uh, and thinking, wow, they're amazing. Uh, oh gosh, I could never get there. So I, I would say, you know, and I've worked really hard at doing this, stop focusing on what others are achieving, stop speculating about what it's like for them, focus on doing what you love, do the best you can at what, you know, at, at what, what you love doing, uh, live a great life for yourself because you really never truly know what's going on for someone else. So my final thought is, you know, as entrepreneurs, I think we're all really, really amazing people. Uh, everyone has amazing goals and visions for their business and um, focus on that and, and grow that. Sandra, it's been a lot of fun reconnecting over the last couple of weeks, but also having you on the podcast to share uh, what your business is doing, because I think it is a new approach and a very fresh approach that 
all of us entrepreneurs can really apply to our life and use it as a launching pad to take us deeper. So thanks for being on the podcast, sharing what you're doing and giving us insights into staffing and how we can do it better. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been such a pleasure. We want to thank Sandra Lewis for sharing her story and giving us insights into the world of professional staffing. As always, you can find links to Sandra, what they're doing, and the things we discussed in the episode notes. I also want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Opportunity in China. Make sure you check out their podcast and learn more about what they can do to help you either learn or teach in China. It has been another fun episode of the Jumble Think podcast. A lot of new things are going on at Jumble Think, so make sure you swing on over to facebook.com slash Jumble Think, where you can join the live recordings with our guests for the B-Side podcast. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to remind you, we believe you were created for purpose, that you are significant, that you matter. Your ideas and dreams are important. It's your turn. You need to take the steps. It's up to you to do it. Small steps, big steps, but any step to move those dreams and ideas forward. The world needs you more than ever before to truly be who you were created to be. Now get out there, chase those dreams, and change the world around you. Vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant. Dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.